Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Charles Borromeo. We, today we celebrate the feast day of the Holy Family. Let us also celebrate and rejoice the gift of our own families. Please silence all cell phones and electronic devices. Today our announcements are the parish office will reopen Tuesday, January 2nd. Monday, January 1st is the Solemnity of Mary. Mass times for this Holy Day of Obligation are 7 p.m. on December 31st, Sunday evening, and 10 a.m. on January 1st, Monday. And Sunday's easier to remember because you know the date is 123, 123, right? 123123. Let us joyfully greet Christ and one another by welcoming those around us. We lift our voices singing, Angels We Have Heard on High, number 87. We are all gathered together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. How are you all? Awesome. awesome to be here. Awesome to be here on this uh, solemnity of Holy Family. As one family of our Lord, as one family, we come together to experience the greatest beautiful way to experience the love of Christ and acknowledging who we are. Let us ask our Lord, pardon and peace. Lord Jesus, we pray for the grace and love of your most holy family. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, we'll try hard in this season to follow the great example of your holy family. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are deemed at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
May Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who were pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity. And so in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. I love to invite children to come forward to pick up the children's bulletin. reading from the book of Sirach. God sets a father in honor over his children. A mother's authority he confirms over her sons. Whoever honors his father atones for sins and preserves himself from them. When he prays, he is heard. He stores up riches who reveres his mother. Whoever honors his father is gladdened by children and when he prays is heard. Whoever reveres his father will live a long life. He who obeys his father brings comfort to his mother. 
My son, take care of your father when he is old. Grieve him not as long as he lives. Even if his mind fails, be considerate of him. Revile him not all the days of his life. Kindness to a father will not be forgotten. Firmly planted against the debt of your sins, a house raised in justice to you. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews, brothers and sisters, by faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. He went out not knowing where he was to go. By faith he received power to generate even though he was past the normal age, and Sarah herself was sterile, for he thought that the one who had made the promise was trustworthy. So it was that there came forth from one man, himself as good as dead, descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and as countless as the sands on the seashore. By faith, Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was ready to offer his only son, of whom it was said, through Isaac, descendants shall bear your name. He reasoned that God was able to raise even from the dead, and he received Isaac back as a symbol. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons, in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and glory for your people, Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted, and you yourself a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow, wid widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were waiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee in their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. By your words, may your sins be forgiven. When I was in the seminary, uh, we lost our grandmother, and I, of course, I was uh, I attended the funeral, and uh, at being at the funeral, seeing my grandfather as my mother's side, grandfather looking at grandmother's body, crying like a baby. He's like a, you know, a huge man, strong man. I never see him, I cannot even imagine him, this kind of a strong guy crying like a baby. And uh, so I was, at that moment I was thinking like, first of all, why you people need to get married, you know? <laughs> why do you want to get married? It doesn't make sense. Because every marriage begins with a lot of joy and ends in tragedy. Either death of a spouse or divorce. Why do you want to get married? It's painful. It doesn't make sense to me. Marriage, have, the marriage makes no sense if we do not look through the eyes of the faith. Without faith, Marriage makes no sense. Otherwise, you have to die in a car wreck together, you know. Then there is no pain. <laughs> there is, you know, what else we can hope for, right? Marriage makes sense only with the faith. Through the eyes of faith, everything starts making sense. Marriage is not about you or it's not about the man or the woman. 
very often when I prepare couples to get married, young men and women, so they, I ask them, why do you want to get married? You know? And usually I get this, this is the answer I get. Men will say, this woman, she's the perfect person. She's beautiful, she's awesome, she's the perfect person. And she would say, this guy, he's the perfect man. He's the perfect man. Well, you know how that goes. <laughs> Everyone looking for a perfect man and perfect woman. Because a perfect man and perfect woman does not cheat, does not fight, uh, does not hurt, does not anger, and does not exist. And there is nothing perfect in existing in the world. Then again, why do you want to get married? Well, then someone will say, this man is going to give me everything. He's awesome. He's going to make me happy. And he's, you know, he works hard. He makes a lot of money. He gives me everything I need. You know that, how that goes. And this, you know, the man will say, this woman, she loves me, she's awesome, she's take care of me when I am sick, she will, I know, blah, blah, blah. Well, the more expectation, more disappointment you become. Right? No. <laughs> Again, why do you want to get married? The whole reason is marriage is not about you. If the marriage becomes about us, we become disappointed. I will talk about myself later, okay? Another homily. But when you think about marriage about you, it will become a disappointment. When we think about marriage about Jesus, you will see this is awesome. Because man and woman are from two different planets, right? most incompatible people in the world. Man and woman, most incompatible people in the world. And it is impossible for man and woman to come together without God. Two planets, it's impossible. Two planets to come together without God. Only God can unite. Only God can unite man and woman. And that is why it is called a covenant. It is a sacrificial covenant, matrimony, we call. God, man, and woman make the family. And it is about Jesus. And that is what we find. In a, without faith, every marriage begins with the joy and ends in tragedy. With the faith, when we look at the marriage between Jesus Christ and the church, started in tragedy. Jesus loved his bride, the church. Jesus lived for the church. He gave himself, his own blood, his own body, gave for his bride, gave everlasting life to the bride in, the, in sacrifice. That marriage between Jesus Christ and bride started in tragedy and happily married 2,000 years and counting. That marriage happily married 2,000 years and counting. Marriage is all about Jesus, the husband and wife giving themselves to each other. Give. Because giving is the nature of God. God gives, 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 and forgives. And man get, 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 and forget. Right? So the nature of God is giving, giving, and forgiving. Man and wife giving, 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 and giving, and forgiving. That is all you do. Because that is what Jesus did. So when you give, you, when you give, you participate in the everlasting love of the Father, sacrificial love of the Son, sanctifying love of the Holy Spirit. You participate. Then you see the miracles happening in, your fam in our families. Then, which means like uh, we can forgive. Giving, giving, and forgiving. Right? Loving is not easy. Sacrificial love. That is why when we look at the crucifix, right? We see the, how much our Lord loved us. You remember, I always say, always remember and tell people, every, every married couple have three rings. You remember that? Engagement ring, 
wedding ring and suffering. <laughs> there is suffering. You remember today's gospel, Simeon said, a sword will pierce through your heart, right? Mary went through that suffering because of Jesus. Every Mary, everyone have that cross. So marriage makes sense only when we look through the eyes of the faith, when we look at the Jesus Christ. That is why we need to see the crucifix. When we look at the crucifix, we remember, we remind ourselves how much our Lord loved us. St. Therese of Calcutta says that. How much my Lord loved us. He loved uh, to the death. You love your family. You will do anything for your family because family is so close to our heart. We are we so much love our family. We will do anything for the family. For what? Why? Because my Jesus loved me and he gave me the right people in my life. My family is not my choice. By the way, you didn't choose your spouse. Well, you will say, you, will cho you chose your spouse, <laughs> you know. You met uh, your husband or wife, you know, in a bar or somewhere, right? But <laughs> you have no idea. There are four billion men and four billion women in the world. How in the world you come to see, come to go, how in the world you went to that particular bar and saw this man, you know, <laughs> or this woman? Or when you went to this church and uh, you were at the wedding and I saw this woman and I fell in love with that woman or fell in love with that man. How come? So God placed you in the right place and God gave you right children. You didn't choose your children. You love to have children. You have no idea whom you are getting. Right? God placed you, gave you right children, right family, everything God prepared for you. Even your siblings. You didn't choose your siblings. No worries. You did not choose your siblings. Okay? God gifted you. So our family is the gift of God. And we look at holy family. Holy family was not perfect. Well, perfect. In a human say, our look, look at our own life. When we compare our life with the holy family, they went through a very struggle you and I can even cannot even imagine. What Mary and Joseph went through when they found that Mary was pregnant. That was enough to, for a family to break into pieces. Being misunderstood. Mary was misunderstood. Right? And just imagine what Mary was going through when she uh, heard that Joseph was trying to divorce her. And fleeing for Egypt for life. Right? And then you remember like Herod was trying to kill. You know, fear of life. Then we find like a public life, Jesus' public life. Everyone was accusing Jesus. You are a madman. You have no idea what Joseph and Mary was going through. And we don't see here much about Joseph in the public life of Jesus. Joseph might have died before Jesus started his public life, raising Jesus alone and being alone. What Mary went through. And just take, thinking, taking his only son in her lap, right? Dead body. What she was going through? Pain, suffering, sword piercing through the heart. Then we find Mary, after the resurrection, you know, Mary was with the apostles. And then she understood, of course, she understood what it means to be the mother of God. She, Joseph and Mary went through every kind of struggles and crosses you and I can even imagine. Then that is why they are holy family is the model family for all of us. We have suffering. I have suffering. We all go through suffering because like there is a pain. The pain is because we love. If there is no love, no pain. If you don't love, you don't care. There is no pain. When you love, there is pain involved. So Jesus loved us. Therefore, we love. Our love has a meaning. 
That is why every Sunday, every Mass, we come here to experience the sacrificial love of Christ in the Eucharist. We take Jesus in our hands and we say, Jesus, this is the body of Christ. We say, Amen. I believe this is the body of Christ. I take Jesus in my hand. I take it and consume it. I, be I become the temple of God. I become the temple of God. Christmas reminds us, my body is the temple of God. Christmas remind me I am a temple my body is a temple of God. Christmas reminds me my soul is an altar of God where heaven and earth meets. And Christmas Emmanuel reminds me I have a mission. I have a, I do have a mission to make Jesus my Jesus so visible. So Christmas reminds us our family is the body of Christ, a family where Jesus lives, the domestic church. And our family is the altar where we encounter Christ, heaven and earth meets. And as a family, we have a mission to make Jesus, the sacrificial love of Jesus, so visible by forgiving and by loving each other. Awesome. Happy an awesome uh, solemnity of Holy Family to all of you. Thank you, you know. Today is the day, you know, just acknowledge and uh, remind you ourselves how blessed we are. With, we have a family, our children, grandchildren, parents, grandparents, our cousins. We have an awesome family. No matter what differences we have, but we can forgive, we can hug each other and uh, there are people in our families going through st uh, tough times, maybe because of the sickness, uh, you know, fighting cancer. I know a couple of our families in the hospital. Today I was at the hospital, uh, you know, uh, to visit one of our friends. And um, my heart is broken to see, you know, you know, the, how things are happening. But we are here to, we are one family of Christ, praying for each other. We are all together and uh, making Jesus so visible by loving each other, by forgiving one another. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, and suffered in death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now let us offer ourselves with our own prayers. For the family of the church, that we may give respect and dignity to all God's children, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For the family of people and nations, that the rights of the old and the young will be upheld for the sake of peace, justice, and harmony, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For all families, that those separated from their families will find a home with God's people, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For broken families, that God's reconciling forgiveness will be granted and accepted to restore all relationships 
with love. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for the lonely this Christmas season. May all who shiver in isolation know the healing love of Christ on earth. May our elderly, our desperate poor, and our disabled find sustaining relationships. We pray to the Lord. For our deceased relatives and friends and all the faithful departed, that they may be gathered into the eternal joy of their heavenly home, especially Toy Malone, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord thank you, Lord, giving us families, giving us our own family. Thank you, being part of our family, guiding us, giving us the opportunity to grow in stature and wisdom in favor with you and in favor with the people, so that through our lives we can honor you. We make all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Our hymn of preparation is Away in a Manger, number 76, number 76. Iniquities cleanse me from all my sins.
Let us pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that, through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and Saint Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and your peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon thy of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory. As without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts, we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to the second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, 
who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his holy spirit may become one body one spirit in Christ may he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with the your elect especially with the most blessed virgin mary mother of god with the blessed joseph his spouse with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs and saint charles borromeo and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help may this sacrifice of our reconciliation we pray o lord advance the peace and salvation of all the world be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant francis or pope james or bishop the order of bishops all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion o merciful father gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life give kind admittance to your kingdom there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through christ our lord through whom you bestow on the world all that is good through him and with him and in him o god almighty father in the unity of the holy spirit o glory and honor is yours forever and ever at the savior's command and formed by divine teaching we dare to say our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation Deliver us Lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior Jesus Christ Lord Jesus Christ who said to your apostles I leave you peace my peace I give you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever Amen. the peace of the lord be with you always Amen. let us offer each other a sign of christ peace Behold the lamb of God Behold him who takes away the sins of the world blessed are those called to the supper of the lamb Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word and my soul shall be healed 
May the body of Christ and the blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. We join as one body singing Bread of Life, number 73. Number 73, we will sing verses 3, 4, and 5. sing, O Little Town of Bethlehem, number 85, number 85. Oh. 
A new year begins on Monday, Lord, and I am praying I will begin 2024 as best as I can and with your help. If there is one thing I am sure of, it is this. I can't count on myself to make the changes I need to make. Only with your help, Lord, will I change and grow and turn my heart around only with your help. You are the Lord of freely given pardons, second chances, clean slates, fresh starts, and new beginnings. And I am going to need all of the above as I begin a new year. Most of all, Lord, refresh and restore my hope that indeed I can make a new beginning, a fresh start, and that you will give me the second or hundredth chance I need to hear your word and follow you to live as I truly want to live, to do what I know you can, you call me to do, to love as I truly want to be loved, and to pray as I truly need to pray. Make me modest in my pledges, Lord. Let my new beginning be reasonable, my intentions pure and generous, my efforts guided by your spirit and my success be the fruit of your grace. Show me, Lord, in my heart of hearts what you would have me resolve. Help me persevere and follow through in the year that lies ahead. Help me live the new year one day at a time, each day filled with your mercy, with your freely given pardon and all the second chances clean slates and fresh stars that fall from your heart and hand. Let us pray. Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family so that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. Awesome. Thank you so much being here as one family. Always love to see you as family coming together, celebrating this Holy Eucharist uh, beautiful way. And uh, um, have an awesome year ahead. And uh, see you, you know, tomorrow Maybe. or Monday, right? We have Monday morning Mass at 10 a.m., in case you are wondering. And uh, Sunday evening, 7 p.m., Vigil Mass also. Okay? Well done. So let us ask our loving Lord's blessing. May the Lord bless you. Amen. May the Lord always protect you. Amen. May the Lord be gracious to you. Amen. May the Lord shine His face upon you, lift up His countenance upon you. Amen. May the Lord give you peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty loving Lord bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord by our lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We invite all children to come forward and join us on instruments as we go forth to share the good news singing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, number 102. Oh!
see